Uminami Farm and we are here to give you another update. Um, I'm sure that you've heard how hard things are for farmers this year with the cold spring and the wet weather. So I don't really want to dwell on the negative parts. I think let's just instead have a good time and talk about some of the things that are going well right now. And yeah, so here we are. It is May 31st. So tomorrow is June already. Um, we are getting ready to transplant all kinds of things in the next while and so I am here stirring um, a pile of what we call bokashi. There is a lot of different ways to make bokashi but it's basically a kind of quick compost that we can use as a kind of like medium term fertilizer for anything from eggplants to cucumbers to cabbages when we transplant them. And so what I've got here is just a mix of some alfalfa pellets and rice bran and I just, you, these brown clumps are some compost from just our vegetable scraps. And yeah, the, you can see the steam coming off the pile. It has really heated up. And this whitish blue here is all microbes growing in there. And so this will serve as a nice source of some microbial life, as well as some actual nutrients for the plants while they're growing. Well, let's go take a look in some of the greenhouses. So here are some of our eggplants. We just transplanted these guys last week. Um, what we do is we wait until the plant has its first flower. And so here's that first flower there that can turn into a nice eggplant fruit. If we wait for the first flower to bloom before transplanting, then they're kind of in fruit producing mode already when we transplant, which just helps them to get going a bit more quickly with their fruit production. Anyways, we planted these guys back in early March actually on the hotbed and grew them on for a few months and now here they are. I really hope that maybe next video I can show you some fruit, but we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, we're keeping them covered up with this um, floating row cover partly to keep the really strong sun off them while they're still getting their first roots established, but also to keep them warm at night just so that they grow a bit better. Basically, um, for plants, if they have a, a, a narrower difference between day and night temperature, they tend to make more leaves. If they have a sharper difference between day and night temperature, they tend to be more stressed out and they make more fruit. And so we want these guys to have a narrower difference right now between the day and night temperature, hence our desire to keep them warm at night with this stuff. Another thing that's going right is we've got daikon now. This is actually our second batch of daikon, which we sowed back in the spring. It um, would have been little tiny seedlings in one of our earlier videos. These guys are nice and beautiful, ready to harvest. Um, thank goodness we have almost no bug damage on them right now, which is really phenomenal. And we are planning to keep on, tra on not transplanting, sorry, we're, we're planning to keep on planting daikon every two or three weeks through the season from now on. Um, we might splice in some video footage of us using um, a machine to make the daikon mound. The machine's kind of cool, so it might be fun for you to see that. The other thing that's doing well right now is potatoes. We planted these potatoes back at the end of April and they are looking great. Um, what we actually did is we actually pre-mounded them using the same machine that you saw us do with for um, making the mound for the daikon. And so that way we're hoping it'll make less work hilling up during the season. That being said, we probably will still hill the soil up a bit more kind of around here, just because you get more potatoes that way and they're less likely to get that greenish color from being ex exposed to the light. So when we come through here and weed, we'll probably mound up the soil a bit more, but it makes me really happy walking by and seeing these potatoes looking so beautiful. So speaking of things doing well, take a look at these peas. Last time we showed them to you, they were just starting to get their first fruits. And now they're so tall and there is so much fruit on them. Here's the snap peas here. Here's the snow peas here. The plants are starting to get a little bit tired in places, you know, on the, on the few days when the sun comes out, it tends to get pretty hot inside and the peas don't always like that so much. But they are producing really well and they've grown great. We also have another batch of peas already started outside so that by the time these ones get tired, we're hoping that we'll have peas coming from outdoors instead. So far, they're looking really good. We'll see how it goes. Another thing that's doing well is the melon plants. We just transplanted these a couple weeks ago and they are already branching out really nicely. 
They look a little bit wilted right now because it's pretty hot in the greenhouse, but I just turned on the drip irrigation and I might open the door or something like that for a little ventilation just to help them out a bit. Um, we will stop covering them with this floating row cover once they, you know, get their branches a little bit bigger, but I'm starting to see some flowers on here already. These are all male flowers for now, but um, typically they put out the male flowers first and the female flowers will come later. So it's hard to say when we'll have melons available, but the beginning is here and it's looking good so far. So here we are at the Fuki patch and um, Fuki is this vegetable which you might have seen at the farmer's market or maybe in your box if you're in the box program. We get these long stems here and then the round leaf on top. We usually eat the stems by blanching them and then we peel out the strings and then cut them and put them in a little stew or a soup or stir fry or something like that. And um, yeah, Fuki is very traditional, but I think it's only uh, traditional in certain parts of Japan. It's a really nice perennial crop. It is one of those things though that we grow more for culture and diversity rather than for profit. This bed of Fuki has been here for more than 10 years and it's certainly really um, treated us well bringing up nice shoots every year. We just don't make enough money from it though to put a lot of time into managing it. So it tends to get all covered with this morning glory, which is also a perennial. And so it's quite happy with all its roots in among the Fuki roots with nothing to disturb it. So this is one of those things that we um, might ask a volunteer to do. I know I've had sometimes people ask about volunteering at the farm and we do take volunteers. Usually volunteer jobs are things like this, helping us to manage those parts of the farm that aren't really as profitable, but it's something that allows us to have a, uh, an element of culture, an element of plant diversity that we wouldn't have otherwise. We'll make this the last stop on today's virtual farm tour. I'm just here in Creek 2 Greenhouse with our upcoming greens and turnips crops. We're just, um, Asumi and I are just preparing a bed right now to transplant some shiso and basil and cilantro, so some of the slightly warmer herbs and stuff like that. And um, yeah, what can I say? Thank you so much for joining us for today's farm tour. It's been really lovely to share these with you guys. And again, if you have any requests for what you'd like to see around the farm, please do let us know. Thanks for joining us.